What's up you guys? So today we're going to go over another algorithm problem called minimum path sum. This is a problem that is primarily asked at Amazon, Goldman Sachs, and Google, and it involves the most dreaded topic, dynamic programming. So let's jump into it. So our description says, given an M by N grid filled with non-negative numbers, find a path from top left to bottom right, which minimizes the sum of all numbers along its path. Note, you can only move either down or right at any point in time. So for this problem, we need to find the shortest path from the top left cell to the bottom right cell. And in this case, we have many different paths that we can take to get from that top left to bottom right position. So for this grid that we have here, 131, 151, 421, the shortest path would be 13111 which has a value of seven. This path has the least sum in comparison to all of the other paths in this grid. So as it mentioned in the description, we can only move right or down in order to get to the bottom right position. And this information is really helpful because this is how we're going to incorporate dynamic programming to solve this problem. So the way we're gonna solve this problem is we're gonna iterate over every single cell in our grid. And as we are iterating over each position, we are going to look above us and to the left, and we're going to get the minimum number in either of those cells and add it to our current position. That way, as we are iterating over each cell, by the time that we get to the bottom right position, we will know the least sum at that time. Just like in any standard DP problem, we're going to come up with a recurrence relation in order to create a bottom up approach. So in this case, our base case is going to be solving the position zero, zero, what the minimum sum is up to that point. And then we're gonna move our way through the array and by the time we get to the bottom right, we will have our answer. So like I mentioned before, in order to know the minimum sum at every single position, we're going to look above us and to the left and get the minimum and then add it to the current position we're looking at. So let me write this out in a recurrence relation. Now we just need to apply this recurrence relation to every position that we're visiting. So let's start looking at position zero, zero. We're gonna look above us and to the left. Now, obviously both of those positions are out of bound, so that can just default to zero. So we're gonna do zero, plus the current position that we're looking at is one. So that means that minimum path to position zero, zero would just be one. Then we're gonna move over to position zero, one. We look above us and to the left. Now above us, there's nothing there. It would be out of bounds. But if we look to the left of us, we actually have an element that's inside the bounds. So the minimum would be one in this case, plus our current position, which would be four. Then we look at position zero, two. We look above us, that's out of bounds. So we know we have to immediately take the number to the left of us. So that would be four plus our current position one. So that would be five. Now we look at position one zero, we look above us and we have a number one. And then to the left of us is out of bounds. So we immediately take the minimum value as one and then we add it to our current position. So one plus one is two. Then we look at position one one. Above us, we have a four. To the left of us, we have a two. The minimum would be two plus our current position, which equals seven. Position one, two, the minimum between the up and left would be five plus the number one, which is six. Position two, zero, the left of us is out of bounds, so we have to immediately take the top element, which would be two plus our current element, two plus four is six. Position two, one, we're going to get the minimum between six and seven. So six plus two is now eight. And then finally, we look at position two, two. We get the minimum between six and eight. So six plus our current position of one is seven. So we arrived at our final answer of seven. That would be the number that we return from our function. And something you may have noticed is since this is dynamic programming, we have computed the minimum path sum at every single position inside of our grid. We started with position zero, zero, which was our base case, and we looped through every single element in our grid, finding the minimum path sum at every position until we get to the element that we cared about, which was at the very bottom right. All right, so we're given a 2D integer array called grid, and we need to return an integer, the minimum path sum. 
So first, let's just grab the rows and columns from our grid to make our lives easier. So we could say int n is grid.length, and m is grid at position 0.length. And then we're going to loop over all of the elements in our grid. And then what we want to do is apply this recurrence relation that we came up with. We're going to look above us and to the left of us. So we could say int top is going to be at position grid of i minus 1 of j. And then bottom is going to be at position grid of i j minus 1. However, we're not done with these two variables yet. Keep in mind that we're checking above us and to the left of us, but we may go out of bounds if our i is equal to 0 or our j is equal to 0. So what that means is we have to have a conditional. If we are out of bounds, we need to default it to whatever integer.max value is. The reason why we're going to do max value is because we're getting the minimum between the two. So let's say we have our top is out of bounds, but our left is not. We, we want to immediately take the left value, and that's vice versa. If our left is out of bounds, that means we default it to integer max value, but our above us is a valid number, we take the above value. So to do that, we need to apply a conditional to both of these variables. We can start off with our top variable. We can say if i minus 1, if it's less than 0, if we're out of bounds, then just default it to whatever integer.max value is. So integer max value. If that's not true, then just take the value there. And we're going to apply pretty much the same logic as the bottom. But in this case, we're going to say if j minus 1 is less than 0, take integer.max value. If it's not, then default it to whatever the number is. So I'm sure you might be wondering what would happen if both our top and bottom are out of bounds, which is at position 0. If we look above us and to the left of us, both of those are out of bound positions. So that would mean we would be getting the minimum between top and bottom, which would still be integer.max value, which is incorrect. So we need to have an extra edge case to check if both top and bottom are equal to the max values. And if they are, then default it to 0. So to do that, we can say int min will be equal to, if top is equal to integer max value, and our bottom is equal to integer max value. If that is true, then we default it to 0. Otherwise, we're just going to get the minimum between the two. So minimum between top and bottom. And now we can apply the regular recurrence relation to solve this. So we can say dp of ij plus equals, because we're taking the current element that we have in dp of ij and just appending it to that current position. And we're appending min. And then finally, all we have to do is when we come out of this for loop, we need to return the bottom right position. So we just say return grid at position i minus 1, m minus 1. So let's make sure this code works. Aww. Oh, I called it dp. This is supposed to be grid. <laughs> so let's submit that again. And there we go. So our time complexity is going to be big O of n times m, where n is the number of rows we have and m is the number of columns we have. We touch every element in our grid a single time as we are computing the minimum path sum of every cell. And then as for our space complexity, it's actually constant because we are using our input to keep track of the previous elements that we've computed. And this is definitely something you would want to clarify with your interviewer if you are allowed to modify your input, because if you start modifying your input and then later on down the line they say, oh, you can't do that, well, now you just wasted a bunch of time. But it does get our space complexity down to be constant. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to support me on Patreon if you want access to my private Discord. There are a couple of us in there right now. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.